Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And let's just start off with this. So we've seen an article break today uh, where it was the SEC says spot Bitcoin ETF filings are inadequate. Well, of course it's spot Bitcoin ETF filings, right? The only thing, the only thing that gets let through the SEC is of course futures. What you see over here, the fact that we have a Bitcoin futures ETF, an inverse Bitcoin futures ETF, and a 2x leverage Bitcoin futures ETF, but still no Bitcoin spot ETF is insane. Yeah, it is insane, right? It's insane that an agency that's sought out to protect investors, right? We gotta protect investors. But let's, let, let's give them futures ETFs. Let me tell you guys right now, there is nothing out there around trading that is more riskier than futures. We've had this discussion in the Discord many times over. I told everyone, futures are extremely risky. You hear all the good stories about futures. Oh, this trader made this much money from you know futures trading. No, no. How about you hear about how much money that trader lost before making a small percentage back? See, the problem is that a very small percentage of traders actually make money from futures. Most of them blow the account. We do see not only are futures riskier and more expensive to hold than spot, but futures contracts are inherently based on the spot market, protecting investors with the SEC finally giving tangible and timely feedback on recent Bitcoin spot ETF filings in no small part to BlackRock filing, maybe we'll finally see some movement and get jerked around a little less. And yeah, it's honestly a big problem with uh, these futures trading ETFs coming through. Um, it's the only thing that's getting approved right now. We need a spot ETF, and we even do see from Patrick McHenry within this article, um, he's responding back to it and saying, if these reports are accurate, Gary Gensler has a lot of explaining to do. An ETF would provide everyday investors with an SEC regulated product. The only reason for Chair Gensler to oppose is if he wants to kill crypto in the US altogether. I would love to see you know, some sort of integrity from the SEC uh, addressing the fact on why futures ETFs got pushed through, but no spot ETF. Because it's absolutely wild to me that we don't have a spot ETF, but we have futures. I'm telling you, the only reason for that is if the SEC wants investors to blow their accounts through futures and utilize it as an example. That's the only way that I could see why these, these futures are getting pushed through while spots are getting denied or maybe he's even saying that they're inadequate. It's a big issue. Now, also, on par with the SEC and what they want to do, well, check this out, from the Wolf of All Streets. These are the four assets that are being traded on EDX Exchange, the platform run by Charles Schwab, Fidelity, and Citadel. Gensler has called all four commodities in the past. That's why I mentioned these four. And he's responding and quoting his own tweet saying, if we don't fight back, it's possible that Americans will be left with only Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash to trade and on exchanges solely ran by Wall Street. And yeah, that's pretty much the future. Um, those are the only four commodities that Gensler has said are commodities, of course. Um, as we really kind of look at the space, it's it, it's so clear to me that the the big tokens, the tokens that are actually providing a threat to the bankers are the ones that are getting scrutinized the most. LCX is a big one, which we've talked about LCX in the past. XRP, obviously, which you guys are all uh, aware of at this point. Now, a few of the other tokens haven't really been targeted, like HBAR, XLM, and stuff like that. Um, but the big ones that are threats to the bankers are the ones getting the most scrutiny pushed their way. What do you see from Johnny Dean saying, Judge Torres' decision gets potentially more significant as each day passes. If it's bad for XRP, notice I said XRP and not Ripple. Then status quo with more political momentum to Gensler Warren Brad Sherman's anti-crypto campaign. But if it's great for XRP, then great news for other tokens. And yeah, I do think that the decision is extremely, extremely significant. The problem is, is what's going to happen, right? Because there's been a lot of information coming out around this case. Uh, we don't know how the judge is going to rule. We don't know what she's going to say. We have to be patient. Um, 
I don't have a ton of confidence behind the, uh, uh, you guys know me, right? Like we, we know that this is a judge, right? Judge Torres is no better than anybody else out there. A lot of people have been saying like, oh, you know, I think that she's going to be great. I think that she's going to rule in Ripple's favor, blah, blah, blah. You know, everyone in this community said the same thing about Gary Gensler. Oh, he's going to protect the space. He's going to come into the space and save everyone. He's probably going to, you know, throw the XRP case out. No, he was not a white knight. Came into the space and completely screwed everyone. And, you know, I think a lot of people are putting a ton of confidence and, you know, all of this, you know, positivity behind Judge Torres, but we need to prepare for the other side of the story as well. What if she's paid off? What if she's corrupted? We don't know. We can't trust anything, anything around this government. So we need to make sure that we are waiting patiently. Now, also, talking about the SEC and talking about these Bitcoin ETFs, Coinbase. Justin, Coinbase will be the CBOE's surveillance partner for the Fidelity-linked spot Bitcoin ETF, according to a refiled application. This is the Chicago Board Options Exchange. Mind you, remember, just one day ago, Coinbase seeks dismissal of the SEC lawsuit claiming agency has no authority, which they don't. Technically speaking, the SEC is not the one bringing regulations to the space. Congress is. Congress is the one. Um, and I will talk about this in a later video. But as we really kind of look at what's been happening, Coinbase has been tied to almost all of these major ETFs. For an example, update Coinbase will be CBOE's surveillance partner for the spot Bitcoin ETFs linked to not only Fidelity, but also Invesco, Vanek, uh, Wisdom Tree, Arc 21, and Invesco slash Galaxy, according to refiled uh, applications. Mind you, CBOE is one of the largest exchanges out there. Um, as you guys do see, you can see 190,147 US futures uh, traded daily volume of contracts traded on CBOE's US futures exchange, uh, 43.67 billion foreign exchange, 10.80 million US options, 8.96 billion uh, European equities, um, $61.52 billion worth of US equities. So again, this is one of the largest, uh, largest exchanges out there. And uh, this is all tied to these ETFs uh, with, of course, Coinbase, because Coinbase will be the CBOE's surveillance partner for these spot uh, Bitcoin ETFs. It's wild. It's wild because one day ago we seen this and uh, Rao Paul actually said, you know, one way or another, Coinbase is going to dominate crypto in the US if these go through, um, just like every other asset that has gotten targeted by the SEC. Um, I've said it in the past that it's very bullish. Coinbase being uh, targeted by the SEC, of course, not financial advice, made me go out and buy some coin um, because I don't really tend to hold traditional stocks all that much. Um, a lot of the stocks I do hold are just kind of outside of the spectrum of crypto, but Coinbase seemed like the stock to buy once it did get targeted by the SEC. Um, there was way too much FUD around Coinbase and everybody thought that Coinbase was finished. Um, and here we have Coinbase tied to almost all these major Bitcoin ETFs. And if they do go through, I do agree that Coinbase is going to dominate crypto, especially in the US. Um, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens going on from here on out. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that that was an uh, interesting thing, uh, an interesting thing to look at, especially considering the fact that like Coinbase just recently, you know, seek to dismiss this case. Um, but also outside of this, Ethereum. So it looks like Vitalik Buterin is... Uh, <laughs> Looks like he's playing the good guy. So we do see this is why we can't have nice things. Read his tweet, then recall the vile and divisive uh, statements from him about XRP and Ripple. Here you guys have those statements going all the way back to December of 2020. Um, he's talking about how the team is sinking to new uh, levels of strangeness, and they're claiming that their you know, trash coin should not be called a security for public policy reasons, namely because Bitcoin and Ethereum are Chinese controlled, which at the time, yes, they were. Um, who knows, maybe today they still are. Um, and we do see over here from uh, Vitalik. The one comment I'll make is that I feel bad that Solana and other projects are getting hit in this way while Ethereum, of course, got the free pass and Ethereum made new all-time highs and continued to skyrocket and continues to expand rapidly and become the you know major key player. They don't deserve it. And if Ethereum ends up winning through all other blockchains getting kicked off exchanges, that's not an honorable way to win. And in the long term, probably isn't even a victory. Hmm. I mean, he didn't have anything good to say about Ripple and XRP at all. But here he's playing the good guy and saying, oh, it, 
it's so bad that you know all these other projects are getting hit this way and that they don't deserve it and if ethereum wins by all these other blockchains getting targeted that's not an honorable way to win what a clown right and we do see this is especially true since the real competition is not other chains huh. could have uh could have fooled me it's the rapidly expanding centralized world that is imposing itself on us as we speak. I wish all honorable projects a fair outcome in this whole situation. The problem is that guess what? There is no fair outcome considering the fact that Ethereum has been uh, involved with a lot of these top players for so long. Go look at Joseph Lubin and all of his connections. I'm sure that you could probably find a, a ton of them. See, this is the biggest problem with this space is that you have, you know, these players that play both sides of the story. I mean, you can't be making these statements back in 2020 and then all of a sudden, you know, almost three years later, be making these statements on how, you know, it's so unfair on how these other projects are getting treated. I think it's unfair that the XRP holders for the last two and a half years have gotten completely shafted by the SEC. And we continue to see, uh, even today, hate and FUD and all of this nonsense being thrown at the XRP community and even, you know, at Ripple as well. While we, of course, forget the fact that Vitalik sold 70,000 Ethereum at, at the top on retail investors. Oh yeah, but, you know, it, it's totally fine. It, it, it's because it's Ethereum, right? This is the biggest problem with this space. The biggest problem with the space is people like Vitalik. Now, with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. Uh, so I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. If you guys are on this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.